What is up, guys? Welcome to our GBA D League Season 3 Draft Analysis. For those of you who didn't catch the draft stream, you're going to get to see the whole team for the first time here. Um, or if you did catch the draft stream, you get to hear me explain my picks pretty much and uh, go over everything in detail and why I picked what I picked. Uh, I got a lot of mixed messages with my draft. Uh, a lot of people were surprised about some of the picks, a lot of people were expecting some of them, uh, some things that I've drafted before in the past, but uh, we're going to hop right into this. I'm, I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. I normally make my uh, draft analysis uh, super long when it comes to uh, draft league format, and uh, I'm going to try to avoid that today, so let's hop right into it. The first mod we decided to draft was a uh, very fast electric type that I have never gotten a chance to use in draft league format up until this point, and that is Thunderous Incarnate. Uh, as you guys know, there are two Thunderous forms. I have used Thunderous Therian. Didn't really like it. Uh, Thunderous Incarnate is a whole different beast, though. It's got a much higher speed tier, uh, and it's a lot more versatile on both its offenses. Uh, as you can see, I have little traits sections on the right there. I uh, give myself reminders as to what to talk about when it comes to uh, each Pokemon. With Thunderous, uh, of course, it has Prankster and Defiant, two very good abilities. Defiant taking uh, advantage of stat drops from things coming like... Uh, from stuff like defog and intimidate it also uses prankster in conjunction with things like thunder wave and other status moves give it an, an additional priority that it normally doesn't have obviously fast electric types as you guys know are very good in the format um but not every fast electric type is really good specifically the thunderous uh both thunderous forms zapdos tapu koko like those four to me uh, are the top of the top but uh thunderous incarnate uh, like I said, it's, it's a beast on its own because it gets speed and offense set up. It has Volt Switch and U-Turn, kind of like uh, Tapu Koko, Zapdos, and of course the other Thunderous form. Uh, it's able to carry coverage for ground types, things like Hidden Power Ice and Grass Knot specifically. Uh, and its adjustable bulk makes it really uh, easy to EV to be able to live certain hits after Stealth Rocks or without Stealth Rocks up. Uh, you can really adjust it the way you need it to. And uh, its speed stat helps with that because it's able to outspeed a lot of uh, base 100s, of course, even some base 110s. But the less you have to invest in speed, the more you can add into your bulk. So uh, very nice coverage overall. Obviously, you guys know Thunderbolt, Focus Blast, Sludge Wave for fairies. Uh, it gets knockoff on the physical side, super power, uh, a bunch of really, really good moves. I'm very excited to use this mon. Moving on to uh, the next Pokemon. I decided to focus on my offense early on, and I knew that my uh, the best offense that I could draft would be coming from the higher tiers. So I hopped right into tier 2 from tier 1, that's where Thunderous came from. And uh, I hopped over to a mon that I've been using lately uh, in the NPL Miners, if you guys know the NPL. Um, I was part of the Miners, I just moved up to Majors. But uh, a mon that was doing very, very well for me before I left and got promoted uh, mid-season. Uh, it was 7 kills, 0 deaths, and I was able to sweep with it 3 times, and that mon is Salamence. Uh, Salamence, of course, being an awesome dragon to have in League format. With Intimidate and Moxie, you can really switch up what its role is. You can bring it defensive. Obviously, as you can see, its stats are incredible uh, all across the board. 95, 80, and 80 in defenses is really, really strong. 135 attack. Uh, makes it an incredible breaker, and I decided to make it one of my Z-Mons. Uh, the only one for now, actually, a lot of people were questioning why I didn't pick another Z-Mon uh, during the draft. But that's because I can keep my 40 points that I have left in my Z-Budget, and I can invest it at a later point in the season. In case I decide to make trades or free agency transactions, I want to have that 40 points available to me, and so that I can put it on something that's a little bit better than a Quillfish or a Zangoose. Uh, you guys are going to see those Mons after, and I'm going to explain them, but... Uh, anyway, I chose Salamence as my only Z-Mon for now, uh, because what it does, it does amazing. It Dragon Dances, and it goes for Z-Fly, or uh, a Devastating Drake through Outrage. Both of those are incredibly powerful moves uh, that increases it, it, its attack as it goes along, so... Uh, it's really, really strong. On top of that, it gets great physical and special coverage. Uh, I've often run things like Hidden Power Ice, uh, Flamethrower specifically for things like Skarmory, Celesteela, uh, things that I need to break that I can't break with its physical attacks. So, um, pretty much all around, really, really strong mod. Most recently, I actually just ran a, uh, a mixed... Uh, Salamence with Moxie. My only physically attack, uh, physical attacking move was Outrage, but I brought Hidden Power Ice and Flamethrower. Uh, or Fire Blast, I believe. Hidden Power Ice was for Land OT. 
which obviously could get an Intimidate off on me. If I could Dragon Dance force out a switch, uh, my opponent would go into Land OT, I would go for Hidden Power Ice, my attack would go right back up. And then Fire Blast was for an Avalug, so the, uh, the creative sets that you can bring with this thing, really, really cool. On top of that, it's actually a Cleric. Uh, not a Cleric, but it gets Wish uh, with a really high HP stat, which could be used in conjunction with one of my later mons, another Wish Passer, as you guys are going to see. But uh, overall, very nice mon. Glad to be using uh, Grandina again. I'm going to go over the nicknames as well. Uh, we have, this is Eneru. Uh, if you guys watch One Piece, Eneru and uh, Grandina from Fairy Tail. So moving on to our third mon. Uh, like I said, I wanted to focus on my offense, and a lot of people uh, didn't do this during the draft, but I hopped right back to Tier 1. I was like, you know what, we're going to get as many good mons as we can early on, and then I'll focus on my bulk after. So... Uh, we're going to pick up a mon that I had a lot of fun with during the March Madness tournament back in, of course, March, and uh, as well as in an another league. Uh, did me very well in both, and I really, really enjoyed this mon, and that mon is Infernate. This is Ace. Uh, I'm actually going to bring up my Discord because I'm going to forget these uh, nicknames, but I remember who I told them to. So uh, I'm just going to bring that up. But this is Ace, the Infernape. Uh, we have, of course, uh, Blaze and Iron Fist, two great abilities. This thing is a great physical wall breaker. It might not seem like it because of its uh, offensive stats, but keep in mind that it's two most powerful uh, stab attacks that it's going to be firing off, namely uh, Flare Blitz and Close Combat, are base 120 attacks. So that's really, really strong. Both Eneru and Ace I could have made into Zemons, but I felt like Salamence had greater sweeping potential than either of the other two, uh, just because of its nature to be able to boost its attack and its speed simultaneously. Dragon Dancers are known uh, to be amazing sweepers with Z-Crystals, so I decided to, to refrain from Z-moving either my Thunderous or my Infernape. Uh, Sing's a great late game cleaner with... Um, with a Choice Scarf, a Choice Band, if everything's slower, it's got a great speed sp a stat of 108. Uh, it's got coverage for checks, uh, things like Thunder Punch for waters, gets Gunk Shot for fairies and whatnot. Uh, and it can be brought bulky as well. It doesn't look too bulky, but because of its typing, it, ch it checks very, it has a very niche role in checking certain things like uh, Mega Scizor, for example. You can run this thing bulky with Slack Off, which is awesome that it gets. It gets Will-O-Wisp. Uh, it, it gets a lot of really cool support moves like Taunt. Uh, I didn't speak about that with Thunderous, but Thunderous also gets fast Taunt. Uh, but Infernape with Taunt, uh, you can run Slack Off, Will-O-Wisp, and then just one coverage move. And uh, it's pretty much walling uh, Mega Scizor 100% of the time. So uh, it's really, really nice in that regard. And uh, yeah, so you can switch it up. You can make it defensive as well. Uh, based on the matchup, of course, based on exactly what you want to check. So most of my mons can do that. Thunder Thunderous is kind of the only one that can't really be defensive. There's one more mon on my team, I spoke about it before, uh, that can't really be defensive, but everything else can switch up between offensive and defensive. So I'm really, really happy with that. That's how I love to draft my team. So that's uh, Ace the Infernape. Moving on to number four, we have Serenity the Cresselia, named after Sailor Moon, if you guys didn't know. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's Serenity. Um, just, the, you can see my first point there on the right. Bulk. This thing is incredibly bulky. I've just recently drafted it, and I absolutely loved it. I didn't even get to use it to its fullest potential, but it's so annoying. Like, this, this thing just bugs the crap out of your opponents. It's so hard to break. Like, look at those stats. 120, 121, 30 in its defenses. Uh, even super effective coverage, if it's not from a wall breaker, it's not necessarily going to two-hit KO Cresselia. Like, that's how bulky this thing is. Uh, obviously, its offense is not so great, 70-75, but as you can see there, I say Calm Mind is scary because uh, this thing forces prep, or for your opponent to have a dark type, essentially, on their team that can pretty much uh, reliably deal with a Calm Mind set. Uh, but Calm Mind in general is a very, very scary set. Uh, because it, obviously you're boosting your special attack and your special defense simultaneously. Your defense is what you should be investing in in that case. And then you can still hit through opposing Calm Mind boosts because of Psy Shock. So Psychics that can do this are generally regarded as really, really strong things like Reuniclus. So that's why I decided to get Cresselia. I wanted a, uh, a Psychic type that could be a bulky Psychic type at all times. Uh, it's got great status options, things like Thunder Wave, uh, whatnot. When I say status, I don't mean necessarily like status status. I mean... Uh, non-attacking moves. It gets a lot of really good stuff. Uh, and, of course, semi-reliable recovery. Of course, it kind of relies on Moonlight a little bit, uh, and I don't have, like, 
uh, Sun, I think Sun, uh, no, Sun hinders Moonlight, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, I don't know what boosts Moonlight, but I don't have any kind of weather on my team, uh, so it doesn't really matter unless I face, like, a Tyranitar, then it, it comes into play. Uh, but I can also Rest, and Rest is actually really nice with Cresselia. Uh, Jar was the first person to really open my eyes to Rest as a move, uh, on Cresselia, just because, um, you're often getting status you're often getting toxic uh, toxic specifically excuse me because that's the best way to deal with Cresselia wear it down gradually with a toxic and if you can dodge that completely great obviously levitate ability keeps it away from uh, toxic spikes and whatnot so that's always nice but uh, toxic is something like on lures for Cresselia that's what you're often going to see is toxic so yeah that's uh that's that moving on to the next mon we have on the team uh, I decided to pick up another Psychic type, uh, another pretty bulky one as well, but it's a little bit more offensive and I needed it for another role as well. And uh, that Mon is Alphonse, the, uh, the Metagross that we have here. Uh, it's a Fairy Check, uh, obviously as you can see, a Reliable Stealth Rocks. That's something very, very crucial. Obviously Infernape gets Stealth Rocks, but I wanted something... Uh, that wasn't one of my most offensive mons to be able to carry stealth rocks. Uh, I can also run it as an agility sweeper. Its bulk is really nice. 80, 130, and 90 makes it very uh, valid to be run physically defensive, even specially defensive with an assault vest. Uh, it's got well-rounded coverage, things like thunder punch, ice punch, uh, and it gets an excellent priority option with bullet punch. I really like Metagross all around. Obviously pairing it with another psychic type, I don't have a problem with having uh, dual typings on a team, especially when it comes to psychic because um, the thing is, Metagross doesn't normally fire off its Psychic Stab, it's normally firing off its Steel Stab and Coverage moves. It's very rare that you're going to see Zen Headbutt on Metagross, because it doesn't really come into play like that. Uh, most things that Metagross wants to check, it checks with its either its Coverage or its Steel type uh, Stab, so... Uh, you're gonna see that as the uh, the season goes on of course, but just a great mon all around I'm really glad to have it base 70 speed is really nice as well If I want to run this thing choice scarfed I can base 135 attack uh, It doesn't seem like Metagross often hits hard because it's not uh, you don't see it in very uh, Very prominent me metagames like uh, the OU tier and whatnot But if you invest heavily into this thing's attack, there's not much switching in uh, that's not resisting a Meteor Mash that can take it. So, uh, I really like this Mon. Really glad to have it. It's the first time I've drafted it. Of course, it will be shiny, as you guys can see on the screen. Uh, so will Eneru uh, that, that we have here. But that's uh, that's about it. We went through uh, Grandina, Ace, and Serenity. Those aren't shiny. Uh, but Alphonse is. So is Eneru. So, uh, that's that. And uh, I have to go back to my nicknames here because every time I click in a command to switch slides, uh, my Discord freaks out. So, all right, here we are, next mon. Uh, once again, I get another common weakness between these three. So I I'm building my defensive core. Up until Infernape, it was all offensive. Now I'm building my defensive core. But my next mon, which is Decidueye, uh, and this one is nicknamed, hold on a second, Kikio. Uh, female Decidueye, nicknamed Kikio, uh, for those of you who have watched Inuyasha, pretty bad anime in general, but anyway, uh, I liked it uh, for when I was uh, when I was a lot younger. Um, so th these three share a very common weakness, uh, or two in fact, uh, Ghost and Dark, uh, but I needed a normal immunity on my team, and I needed another form of reliable recovery. As you guys saw, uh, my only form of hazard removal at this point, up until this pick, was Salamence. And Salamence doesn't like coming in on rocks in general. So I needed something else to be able to take uh, a hit and be able to get off a defog if at all necessary during a game. Uh, of course, the normal immunity is always appreciated. It gets reliable recovery in Roost, hazard removal in Defog. It's got offensive and defensive capabilities because it's able to Swords Dance. It's able to uh, Nasty Plot, I believe, as well. Uh, and it's got great offensive stats. In fact, its attack stat is higher than Infernape's, uh, believe it or not. But its speed is what kind of hold it, holds it back. Another base 70. Another mon that I've seen run with Scarf before and can do a lot of work because Scarf, max attack, adamant, spirit shackle. There's not much switching in on that that's not a normal type, so... Uh, that's really, really nice, uh, or dark type, of course, that would be the, the one resist. Um, two forms of momentum, I do, I do mention this, because this is very, very crucial. Uh, speed pass is banned in, um, in the GBA. However, baton pass in general, and passing stats, not banned. So I can pass swords dances, or, um, nasty plots into my offensive threats, or even some of my defensive mons, and really put on a lot of pressure with those. Because this thing, of course, does get access to Baton Pass and U-Turn. Having U-Turn uh, on a Defogger 
is really really nice and it's something you don't see too often uh scissor is one of the namely uh one of the most prominent ones uh that comes to mind but decidueye does it so so well and the last point on on the traits here that we see is trapping so spirit shackle as you guys know uh it's a what's the base power i think it's 80 uh or 85 i'm not 100 percent sure right now i'm gonna look it up while i'm talking about it but anyway it's a it's a ghost type move physical of course making um making do with uh decidueye's great physical attack of 107 and um it traps your opponent they can't escape so if you're spirit shackling and you catch something that can't beat you through roosting you can set up multiple swords dances and then when you're ready you can baton pass them out or you can just end up knocking out uh whatever's in front of you so this was one of the mons that i did consider for uh for a z mover However, the thing is that tier 2 Z costs 60 and tier 3, which Decidueye is, costs 50. And that's just above the 100 mark. So it really, really, really sucks that I wasn't able to get Decidueye and uh, Salamence, but it totally makes sense. I understand the way the budget is, why it's that way, because tier there are a lot of tier 3s that are big offensive threats. And if you could get a tier 2 and a tier 3 as a Zemon, you'd have an immediate advantage over anybody else. So... Uh, I, I completely understand that I can't make this thing one of my Zemons. I would have otherwise because Sinister Arrow Raid is awesome. Uh, but that's that. Uh, it is base 80. I did look it up, by the way, guys. Uh, PP of 10, which is not amazing, but so be it. It also gets access to, of course, Leaf Blade and whatnot. Uh, Decidueye has some pretty cool coverage, I believe. I'm just going to go over it real quick. Uh, it's got... Um no, it doesn't. It's uh, it's pretty basic, actually. Gets things like Brave Bird and whatnot. That's kind of cool. Uh, Steel Wing is nice for fairies, I guess. Uh, the acrobatics, nothing really too noteworthy. It does get haze. This is something important that I wanted on my team. Uh, if something is going to be setting up in front of me, like Calm Mines um, and whatnot, like Reuniclus, for example, shout out to Leo, I believe, um, I can haze and I can get rid of the boosts. I don't want to give away too much of what I'm going to do uh, about certain mons, but uh, I will say that haze is going to be very nice for slower setup sweepers. So, yep, that's uh, that's the Sijuai Kikio. Moving on, like I said, Guys, I had a big problem with um, Dark and Ghost types, and I needed to patch that up. And I ran into the same issue when I was uh, drafting for the NPL Miners, and I found the same solution to uh, to the problem in both scenarios. I was able to find the same Mon that could remedy it, and that Mon is Umbreon. This thing is named Blair, um, named after the cat from Soul Eater. I know this isn't a cat. Don't, don't slew me uh, in the comments, but... Uh, that's what I decided to name it. It looks like Blair. Uh, Blair has yellow eyes. Uh, but this is my ghost check. This is, uh, not necessarily a dark check, but I can switch into dark types decently well across my team. Things like Infernape and whatnot. Physical dark types, uh, don't like switching in on Intimidate, which you're gonna see I have another Intimidate mon in a second. But Blair is really nice because Wish Passing is so, so great. Like I said, I have it with Salamence, but Umbreon's gonna be doing it a lot better. Um, it's really difficult to break in general. Like, super effective coverage. This thing can take, with a max speed F set, this thing can take two uh, Life Orb Focus Blasts from Gengar with a Protect. So just to give you an idea, it can really, really take on a lot of powerful wall breakers uh, that even get coverage for it. Now, of course, Stab hits. That's a different story altogether. Uh, but that comes with the matchup every week to week. We'll figure that out as we go. Uh, having a cleric is really, really nice. Heal Bell, as I said before, one of the biggest ways to deal with Cresselia is to toxic it. And if I can Heal Bell that off, then Cresselia is right back in the game. So Umbreon and Cresselia is one of the most annoying cores that I've encountered through drafting. And I think not personally having played against it, but just the synergy between the two is really, really nice. Both can be a little bit passive at times, as you can see. But what Umbreon does have going for it is Foul Play, uh, which can punish physical setup, so things like Swords Dance and whatnot, as long as it's not uh, resisted, pretty much knock out the physical attacker that's trying to set up in front of you. So uh, really nice mono all around, rounds out that, uh, or gets rid of that weakness. So I'm really happy to have Umbreon on the team. I'm really glad it wasn't sniped before it got to me, because then I would have had a real problem. Uh, this was one of the core pieces to the team that I was trying to build. So uh, really nice, Blair the Umbreon. Moving on. Uh, something that I encountered with the Umbreon Cresselia core, uh, through having it in the NPL Miners was that it's weak to one specific typing, which is bug. And the best way to remedy bug weaknesses, 
uh, specifically from things, again, like Scizor, uh, because Scizor is a mon that can come up multiple times in a draft because there's a mega version and, of course, a base version, so you want to cover both. Uh, the best thing that can deal with both is a poison type like Quillfish. Uh, Quillfish is my secondary Intimidator that I mentioned just a few seconds ago, and um, paired with Salamence, of course. It gets access to Spikes and T-Spikes. It's a grounded poison type, meaning that it can absorb T-Spikes, uh, take off that pressure from Umbreon when it lands into the field, uh, make sure that it doesn't get toxic. Uh, great team synergy, like I just mentioned. We have, uh, of course, a big bug weakness between Cresselia and Umbreon, but Quillfish fixes that because it's able to intimidate physical bugs, which is the most common bug spam that you're going to see. Bug Buzz doesn't come up too often. Volcarona is the only one that really utilizes it well. Um, a couple of other things, but anyway, we won't go get into them because I don't think they were drafted. Uh, but for physical bug type attacks, mostly U-Turn and uh, things like Lunge or X-Scissor or whatnot, uh, Quillfish is really, really nice for those. Uh, gets access to Quick Taunt. I, I don't say Fast Taunt because it's not the fastest mon. Uh, it's got base 85 speed, of course, but it's it's a decently fast taunt. It can check things like uh, Skarmory and uh, other, basically other hazard setters really well uh, in a lead matchup. Uh, it's a secondary fairy check. Uh, I did have Metagross. Now I have another one. Uh, Metagross scares out a fairy immediately, um, and it can switch in on them. Quillfish kind of doesn't let them come in. Um, it doesn't let them come in at all because Poison Jab is just so threatening uh, to most fairies in general. And to the ones that can take it, normally water moves can, can deal some damage. So uh, base 95 attack is really, really nice. Obviously, its, it's bulk isn't the greatest, but uh, keep in mind that I'm going to be wish passing into Quillfish. And every time it comes in, it intimidates. So I can swap between Quillfish and Salamence or Quillfish and... Um, and Umbreon and just keep it healthy throughout the game. So uh, as long as I'm not getting a hit with special hits uh, On the physical side Quillfish can take hits very very nicely and of course there's always the uh, The random scald burn that I can throw out. That's always nice uh, This thing gets uh, cool status moves as well like destiny bond and whatnot I believe it gets thunder wave as well just like Roselia. So uh, very nice defensive core in general. I feel between these uh, Five I believe is it five or is it four? It's four. Uh, it's Cresselia, well, it's Cresselia, Metagross, Umbreon, Decidueye, and uh, Quillfish. Bakugo the Quillfish, by the way. Didn't mention the nickname, but uh, those five specifically. Very nice defensive core. Now, something that I found that I was lacking greatly on my team uh, was a an electric switch in. I don't have anything to take on electric types right now. Uh, Salamence and Thunderous don't appreciate them. And while my team can deal with them sort of well, uh, Decidueye doesn't like the fact that some electric types get a super effective coverage for it, like Flamethrower, things like Zapdos. Obviously, at this point, I didn't know if Zapdos was going to be drafted or not, but uh, I needed to make sure that I had a check to uh, just Volt Switching in general. So uh, I ended up picking up, I think it's nine. Yes, there we go. Uh, Pilliswine. So this thing, of course, uh, kind of has to run an Eviolite most of the time, but it's another rock center on our team. It's our third and one, which is really, really good. Uh, I like having three rock setters. I don't like it being predictable whether or not it's Metagross or Infernape. Like, if I don't bring either uh, Metagross or Infernape to a game, if only one of the two comes, then my opponent automatically knows, okay, well, his rock setter is the one that's left over, the one that showed up to the match. Uh, but if I have three, then it becomes a little more complex. So more rocks, the better, always. Uh, I think Jolt has like five rock setters on his team. It's ridiculous. Uh, but I have obviously spikes, T-spikes, so does he. But anyway, uh, moving on. Ice Shard is really key. I like having Ice Shard because it stops uh, normally things like Salamence, but I have Salamence. Uh, but other things like Garchomp, Flygon, you're able to just deal a lot of damage uh, prior to them being able to uh, set up and sweep and then revenge with Ice Shard. Ice Shard is, is probably, I would say, top three priority moves uh, along with Bullet Punch and perhaps Mock Punch uh, are both up there. Quick Attack's really good. Sucker Punch is really good. I didn't mention, but Decidueye does get Sucker Punch. Uh, so that's really nice. Gets priority there. And Infernape gets Mock Punch. So I, I'm really stacking up on priority. 
I wasn't even intending to, and I ended up with so many forms of priority across my team, which is really, really nice. Obviously, like I said, Pillar Swine is able to stop Volt Switch uh, shenanigans. Uh, the base 100 attack is really nice. It's stronger than you'd think. Um, yeah, this thing can deal a lot of damage to whatever it wants. Like, base 100 is nothing to frown upon. Uh, and Pillar Swine often, because of the fact that it carries EV Light, has the luxury of being able to run Adamant or with a lot of attack investment. So, very nice. Obviously, it's a little bit knockoff weak. My team in general is a little bit knockoff weak. Uh, other than perhaps Intimidate Salamence with a Z Crystal, but everything else doesn't really like getting its item knocked off, so I'm gonna have to be careful with that. Uh, but my next Mon that I end up picking up, um, forcibly, actually, uh, <laughs> is a very, very good knockoff switch, and as you guys are gonna see. So, this is Pillow Swine. It's, uh, it's a great electric check, and I needed a ground type in general, and having more rocks, having Ice Shard, always really nice. Freeze Dry as well as, uh, as an option, I believe Pillow Swine does get Freeze Dry, just like Mammoth Swine. So, uh, yeah, that's that. Moving on to our second to last Mon. At this point, uh, I had gone through a few free picks, and I only had, I believe, um, something like 60 points, or I had 20 points left. Uh, I can't I can't remember the exact amount, but um, however many um, a E tier costs, I had 40 less than that. So I couldn't go negative. Um, to, get, to get my E tier first, because that would put me in the negatives. So I had to get my Mega immediately. I know you guys were waiting for the Mega pick. Obviously, the 11 Mon Draft requires a Mega pick. So I looked at my team, and I'm like, I looked at this early on, and I was like, okay, I know exactly what Mega I want. is going to pair really nicely with this. Obviously, we have uh, Salamence with Defog. We have uh, Decidueye with Defog. But I have a little bit of a hazard stacking team with Quillfish. I wanted to make sure to have Rapid Spin on my team. So decided to get the by far the best Rapid Spinner uh, amongst all Rapid Spinners, in my opinion, Mega Blastoise. It has the most reliable spin in the game. Why? Because it has Dark Pulse and it's Mega Launcher boosted. So Ghosts can't switch in. You're pretty much always getting off a spin when you want to. So that's really, really nice. Uh, I say that Mega Launcher uh, for four stabs because it has Dragon Pulse, or Sphere, Dark Pulse, and uh, it's Water Stab. Essentially, those are the four you're going to be using most often, of course. So, uh, very strong special breaker. Uh, I have the stats wrong, uh, the actual stat distribution. Um, I'll bring them up for you in a second, but uh, I messed up that slide. Sorry about that. But uh, base 135 special attack is what it has. Uh, it's got a decent speed of uh, base 78. I got that one right, apparently. Uh, base 115 spadef, base 120 defense, 103 attack and 79 HP. I think I did regular Blastoise. Is that what I did? Yeah, that's exactly what I did. I used regular Blastoise. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so there's supposed to be a little bit higher, of course, as you can see by the uh, the bars, but um, yeah, Blastoise uh, is just really, really bulky uh, because 79, 120, and 115 is really nice. Wish passing, once again, into it is always uh, valid with Umbreon and with Salamence. Uh, the base 78 speed is nice. I can't scarf it, of course, but it's it's generally nice for getting off spins if I need to. So uh, just a great Mon, great water type to have. Both of my water types don't have recovery, unfortunately, in Quillfish and Blastoise. Uh, but the fact that I have Wish passing into them should remedy that to an extent. So moving on to our very last Mon. Like I said, we had to get an E tier. And one typing that I didn't have on my team yet was Normal. And normal is actually quite nice because it gives me an immunity to ghost, which obviously you guys know my defensive core of uh, Cresselia, Metagross, and Decidue I have. Uh, so I needed something to be able to take on uh, ghosts a little bit better, so a normal type really helps with that. And uh, on top of that, I end up getting another form of priority, again, without intending to. Uh, but I look at tier 5 and I'm like, wow, this thing is here. Uh, and I end up getting Zangoose. Zangoose, uh, what's your nickname? That's going to be a f uh, hard to find. In the meantime, as you guys can see, it's got base 115 attack. Toxic boost as an ability is really cool because it punishes my opponents for going for its T-spikes. Not only do I have Quillfish to suck them up, multiple forms of Defog, Hazard Removal, but I also now have uh, Zangoose to take advantage of my opponent's T-spikes. So that's really, really nice. Uh, Zangoose, I can't remember what I was, uh, what I was going to nickname it now. And I have to figure that out at some point. Um, this might be the one that I named BM, uh, BML, BML, that's your name, right? <laughs> yeah, it's BML. Uh, a friend of mine asked for me to nickname something after him. I uh, was initially going to name my entire team after, uh, after, uh, anime characters. In fact, uh, this is, uh, where, where are you? Uh, y this is Toshiro, and this is, uh, Gamagori, and finally we have, of course, 
uh, Zangoose, which I don't have a nickname for. I guess I'll go with BML. Uh, but it hits really, really hard with Toxic Boosted Facade, guys. Like, super hard. Strong priority with quick attack. Excellent coverage. Things like knock off and close combat. Uh, it's got a respectable speed stat with 90. Uh, I believe this is my only base 90, so I went in between um, 85 and 100 with Cresselia and Salamence, so I needed something right up in between. Uh, it's a really nice speed tier to hit. The problem with Zangoose is, of course, it gets weakened quickly. But keep in mind, Cresselia has Lunar Dance, so I can bring it back at any time, full health. And I, once again, I have multiple forms of Wish Passing into Zangoose, so if I let it get weakened throughout the game, I can either Lunar Dance it back in, or I can Wish Pass into it. Uh, wish Baton Pass is an option with um, with Umbreon. So there's a lot of things my opponents have to prep for with this team. Uh, so I'm really, really happy with that. Um, in general, most of my Mons, like I said, can go between offensive and defensive. The three that are kind of limited, Thunderous can't really be that defensive. Um, there's some options with it, I believe, but nothing, uh, nothing that comes to mind immediately. Uh, Umbreon can't really go offensive and Zangoose as you can see its defensive stats not so great it can't really take hits so I gotta watch out for one priority and two uh, things faster than Zangoose but everything else this thing does an amazing job at wall breaking uh, on the physical side of course Infernape and Salamence aren't always going to have the best matchups uh, but in the case that they don't normally Zangoose will so uh, it's, a, it's a really nice type variation there so that's uh, that's pretty much the team guys that's everybody um, BML uh, I know I told you that I, I had nicknamed everything already, but it turns out that I forgot one Mon, so uh, you got the nickname, I'll give it to you. This is it, and uh, that's it guys. That's the full draft. Uh, if you guys do uh, do know, is, is what what is my, okay, you know what, we're just gonna go like this. Uh, if you guys don't know yet, uh, the season starts next Sunday, September 3rd at 2pm Eastern is when my game is going up. Uh, me and my de opponent decided that that would be a good time for both of us to, to get our game up. Uh, gives us enough time to uh, to really do something in the morning. We both live on the East Coast, so. Uh, first game goes live September 3rd, 2 p.m. Eastern. Make sure to be subscribed if you aren't already, if you want to catch that game. Uh, this layout in the back, I'm just using OBS for the first time, so if you hear me, like, hesitating on certain things uh, during this draft analysis, normally that wouldn't happen because uh, I... I'm usually on showdown, but I really wanted to make something nice for you guys to see. I know I messed up on the Blastoise. I'm sorry. Uh, that's that's my bad, but um, unfortunately, that's that's the way it is. But yeah, that's that's it, guys. Uh, if you guys did enjoy, of course, make sure to leave a like down below for me. Support your Montreal Habsaws. Comment down below what you liked about the draft, what you don't like. I like to hear feedback, uh, what you guys are th thinking that's missing from the draft. Of course, I do have access to free agency transactions and trades, so I'll be looking at those. Uh, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the game next Sunday. And that is it, guys. Thank you for watching. Catch you guys later. Ciao.